that don't murder, don't steal. Can I ask you something? What can you ask me, ma'am? Go ahead. Lower my voice. You want me to lower my volume? Lower my volume. You know what? Can I can I say something? Reply back to what you're saying. Do you know what God sees? No, no, no ma'am. I'm asking a question. Do you know what God sees? Are you? Do you? I need to remind you of what God sees. That's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. We're always thinking about ourselves. It's the way the world is. Cold. Cold. Can you lower your volume? Can you stop saying this? Can you stop saying that? That's the problem today. We don't want to hear anything at all. Jesus, getting us ready for that. they're too good for God because they're in religion maybe they're too good for God because they pay their taxes some think that they're too good for God and in so thinking they don't need to repent if they do sin God says it's okay because you prayed already five times a day you know is it possible is it possible to be too good to be saved? According to Jesus, the Savior, it is certainly possible. When Jesus was upon the earth, headed towards the cross, Calvary, many in that day were too good to be saved, or so they thought. Some were Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Come on now, I, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. Others were regular folks. Like the rich young ruler. And then the lawyer in Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Let us not to forget those who were chief priests and elders and what about Mark chapter 12? Not all but most of these mentioned and others thought that they were too good for anything and Jesus had to go around. They So they thought because they said to themselves that they're too good. They obey the laws of the land. They don't need what God has to offer, they say. For that matter, they accused Jesus of being a blasphemer and eventually crucified him. Thank you. God bless you. Do we dare omit the faceless crowd that stood before Pontius Pilate cried out, crucify him? And his blood is on us and all of the children. All these people thought they were too good. Or should I say good enough? You're welcome. God bless you. They went to Sunday school and church every time the doors were open. They paid their tithes. They said their prayers at night. Now I lay me down to sleep. They paid their bills, they kept all the Ten Commandments, well maybe most, maybe a couple, maybe a few. They were good people for crying out loud, they weren't sinners like those prostitutes, tax collectors, that don't murder, don't steal, 
can I ask you something? What can you ask me now? Go ahead. Will you be able to like lower your volume sometimes? Because there are apartment buildings there. And even if we close the window, lower my voice. Lower, 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 lower my volume. Lower my volume. Because people in here too. You know what? Can I can I say something? Yeah, briefly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reply back to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
hear what Jesus has to say about it. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore, if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. This is for the religious folks. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Amen. Praise the Lord. If the eye is blind, there can be nothing but darkness inside. Jesus is saying that if we can see the truth, seeing ourselves as God sees us in our need for him to save us, then we can be saved. But if we think we're good enough, we'll never see that need. And we will remain in darkness and be lost forever. No one can serve two masters. If for either he will hate the one and this love the other, or he will be loyal to one and despise the other, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God the material things. You cannot serve God and be in sin. For some, they're in sin and they're okay with it. Only God knows just how much people call themselves Christians, call themselves Buddhists, call themselves Muslims, call themselves whatever they think. So that in the eyes of man, in the eyes of the rabbi, they're seen as good. But actually, they're just religious only. They are no more than a person, than the car that sits in their driveway. Far too many people think their soul is like a townhouse. Jesus can live on one side and Satan on the other. That is the problem today. Hey, God bless you, man. People ignore God. They ignore the truth. And so they will reap problems in the end. Remember the day you walked from God. Remember the day when God was calling you and you said, no, I'm good. Actually, most think that they can let Jesus live in a small room in the back of the house while the rest of the house is for their pleasure. Sorry. But the Holy Spirit of God cannot and will not set up housekeeping with men. Jesus is not talking only about money, by the way. He is referring to anything we pit above him. Again, it can't be done. It won't be done. It is either God or mammon. It cannot be both, ladies and gentlemen. When Jesus heard that, he said, to them, those who those who have no need for a physician, but those who are sick, those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. All Jesus is saying here, Jersey City, is that those who know that they are sinners and call out to him will be saved.
will be healed. Will rise up. Will survive. Just like when you go to the hospital, you the only way the hospital can help you is if you call them. Same way with Jesus. Except for in this case, Jesus knows that you need him. He knows. It's you that don't know because it's you that stays in sin. So what do they do about a man of God? They try to remove the truth. God cannot be removed. If you call upon Jesus, he will heal and save you. Now many people may feel that they do not need to be saved. That's like a battery that doesn't know that it needs to be recharged. All those who think they're special and don't need a physician will die in their sins. They will die. And they don't even know. Just like the average, they do not understand. The day is coming, ladies and gentlemen, when you will stand before God. What will you tell God? Some people are so ignorant, they say that day is not even coming. In fact, they don't believe in it. They think that that's enough to make it go away. Would Jesus identify us with the Pharisees or the tax collector in Luke chapter 18 verse 9? Jesus is also stressing that he doesn't want our works. He wants his works done in us, not works of sin. He wants your heart. God wants your heart. Not your leftovers from McDonald's. He wants your heart. Because he can do mighty things with you in you for you hallelujah now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples for there were many and they followed him and when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eating with tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, a doctor. But those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It is clear that even Jesus can't help a person if that person doesn't think they need help, like some of you today. People say they don't need God, but yet they put on a mask because they're trying to live. God is saying, if you want to live, you trust in him, not the gloves and the mask. For the blood of Jesus is greater and covers a multitude. But those who know they are sick may call out to him and he will heal them. Notice that when it comes to God, it's not a maybe or a little bit. It's all the way with God. It always has been. It always will be. When those who put their trust in Jesus know nothing else can tell them otherwise. 
No one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. Just because you go to church doesn't make you a child of God if you're outside of Him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world. That those who do not see may see. And those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, if your sin remains. When Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, he is speaking of judgment, the judgment he will endure on the cross for us. It's not just for the Muslim. It's not just for the Christian. For the unbeliever. He came into this world to go to the cross for all of us. Not just black lives, not just white lives, but that all lives may be saved in Jesus Christ. The Pharisees were blind. They were blind to their need to be saved. Jesus came into the world to save us. Jesus came into the world to save sinners and all our sinners. However, we must see that we are sinners in a need to be saved. Then we can be saved by calling upon Him. Finally, the Apostle Paul said, this is the faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners to whom I am chief. First Timothy chapter 1. Much of this can be clarified By a quote saying, I believe it is easier to reach a godless atheist than a hypocritical churchgoer. The godless atheist may respond when he hears the gospel for the first time, but the hypocritical churchgoer has heard the gospel again and again and has become hardened to it. That is the real tragedy. That was exactly the problem with the Pharisees. They have become hardened to the gospel, just like some of you today, who walk by the word of God. You hear the word, but you don't stop. You keep going. Because in your heart, you feel that you don't need what I'm saying. And so you continue to go through so many problems in life that when you reach a point of tragedy, you're confused because you want God, but then at the same time, you want God your way. Oh, man. This is so hard, it'll make somebody take their mask off. <laughs> Jesus came to save those who are in sin, which was all of us. And until we recognize that we are people who practice in sin, you will remain blind. The Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, has some very good advice for the people of New Jersey, especially Jersey City. He said, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. 
You didn't say examine yourself at, by the doctor to see if you been tested positive for COVID-19. He said examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. It's the problem today. People are not testing themselves. That's why when the devil comes, he'll look at you and be like, oh, you just go to church. Oh, okay. And he'll strike you with cancer. <laughs> Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. And we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Hundreds, thousands, perhaps millions of people are going through life walking arm in arm with Satan into hell. And they don't even know it. They're more concerned about getting furniture than they are getting Jesus. They're more concerned about going to McDonald's, feeding their souls, than they are needing the word of God to eat. When Satan said, cast the stone down and make it bread. Jesus didn't say, I gotta go get me a number three at McDonald's. He said, man live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When, every time we get hungry, we want to go get something to eat. But every time you are stressed out and depressed, you want to get medicine to make you feel better. God says, how about you read the word? so that your soul may eat. Any second their foot could slip into eternity. The eternal abyss. Any second you could die right now. What are you going to do? The bank is right there. Everybody's money is there. Guess what? When you die, that money they will come with you. They think they see, but Jesus said they are blind. You graduated from high school, you got a college degree, but Jesus said you're still blind. Jesus came to save sinners. Don't allow Satan to steal your most precious possession. And I'm not talking about PlayStation 4. Your eternal soul. I advise the people in this area that do not know God to call out to God. Call out to God and ask him to open your eyes. Then put your hand on his. How about it? Are you truly thinking that you are too good for the word of God? Because life as we know it cannot and will not continue to go forward. Things are changing. And while they are changing, you are still blind. Listen to how powerful the word of God is. For light has come into the world. If anybody would like to know Jesus for who he is, not who he was, but for who he is and what he has done, you can come now. God bless you, ma'am. Do you like one? Thank you, yeah. God bless you. Yeah. You know Jesus? Amen. That's why I think it's great that you're doing that. Amen. Well, you know what? Some other people don't think this is great. They, no, I, they made a petition against me. Hey. One guy. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Let that be encouragement to you. The paper. Encouragement. Amen. Thank you. If anybody would like to come and know Jesus Christ today, now is the time. Now is the time for you to come to know him. The time is now. 
for you to turn your life to Jesus. Because the lawless one is rising up and God is calling for you. If you would like to receive prayer, now is the time for you to receive it. Not a minute longer shall you delay. God says, here he is. You are alive. And if you take your life and throw it away, when will be another time? God bless you. Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I am calling people to repent. If you live in sin, I am calling you to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. God has watched you your entire life and now he is ready. He has always been ready and he is willing to accept you. All you have to do is accept the gift of God. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Is grace a license to sin? No, it's not, ladies and gentlemen. You have this moment in time because of him. Not because you paid your taxes. Not because you stayed out of jail. Not because you were a good person. Not because you stayed faithful to your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. But because God loves you and Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Now God is giving you a moment Hi. A moment in time for you to come. Whatever it is that may be holding you back, God can remove it. Whatever it is that may be holding you down, God is greater and He can release you. There are people who are in bondage, physical, spiritual bondage, pornography, can't stop watching it, watch it when they get home, watch it in the morning. So you can wave your hand to me all you want, doesn't change anything. They watch it, and they don't even know that they're in prison. Listen, you don't have to go to county jail to be in jail. There's a thing called Facebook jail, and there is sin. And God wants to release you from the bondages of sin by filling you with his Holy Spirit. And you may think that you don't need God. You may look at God and say it's just religion. But God says without him, you are going to perish. After this comes the judgment. Do you seriously want to wait until the time is over for you to say, I should have, I could have, I would have? Or do you want to come to God right now? That's the question you need to ask yourself because the times are not getting any better. The people who run this world, they do not have your best interests in mind. God has and has always will have your best interests in mind. God says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts I think towards you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. It is so beautiful that God says, Thoughts of peace, 
Satan has made people think that they don't need God to give peace. But the Bible says that the wicked, they have no peace. That's why you find yourself looking in all these other places in the world for happiness, for love. I'm in that. But never towards God. Because the flesh is hostile towards God. question is right now, are you going to take this moment that God has given you and choose Him? God says you can do it. He is with you. He will be with you no matter what you are going through. All you have to do, amen, all you have to do is go to him. God says all you have to do is accept him. Forsake sin. The reason why some of us are in sin is because we truly don't realize what it is. We don't know that fornication is fornication. We don't know. God says I'm telling you. God, God says, I'm telling you, I'm telling you today that when you die, you're not going to get the 70 virgins that Muhammad promised you. You're going to get hell. You're going to get the lake of fire. No matter what your credit score look like, you're going to get it. Because God says, even though you thought you were good, you still lived against Him. Because you love what God hated. And hated what God loves. You said evil is good. You said abortion is good. You said murdering children and their womb is good. And because you accepted that theology, that mindset, God says, eternity in the lake of fire for you. But he says, if you turn to him and believe in him, you will live. You will live if you accept him. You will live if you go by the spirit of God, you will live. If you want to succeed in life, God is the way. God says you don't just succeed by getting a college degree and a good job. You succeed by walking, talking, hearing, believing, eating the word of God. Not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. So how about it? Do you still truly think that you are good enough, or too good enough, to be saved? Because the last time I checked, man has life insurance, health insurance, religion, but nothing for eternity. Which means when you stand before God, everything that you work for will not be able to hold up. It has no weight. The car, it stays here. The money, it stays here. The clothes, it stays here. You will stand before God naked. Everything will be shown into light. And God says, you can change that moment by repentance. Repentance. Saying, Lord, I recognize what I've done. God says, how about it? Will you come to Him?